I gotta tell you, getting PS2 games to start nowadays is a real pain. <laughs> well, there's no secret as to what this game is. I wanted to get as much of those uh, previous screens as possible. But, let's enjoy the opening cinematic. It's a fun word to say, isn't it? Cinematic has a uh, cinematic feeling about it. <laughs> Godzilla! Godzilla! When I was a kid, I mean, I know that basically this is better graphics than the last one, but... <laughs> that guy just looked so fake, so plastic, and the lip syncing was off. I know what series this is, but still. I gotta admit that even Godzilla doesn't look good in these cutscenes. <laughs> Kinda looked like he was preparing to get hit there. Like he was already reacting, recoiling from the attack as it came. Kiryu looks okay. That's Mechagodzilla 3, also known as Kiryu. I'll probably be using both throughout this playthrough. Hello everybody, I am the Linkzilla, and welcome to... Godzilla, Dis save the Earth. God damn it! <laughs> Godzilla, save the Earth. The long-anticipated sequel to Godzilla, destroy all monsters melee. This one was released back in 2004, 2005, to celebrate Godzilla's 50th anniversary, as well as hype the upcoming final movie in produced by Toho, Godzilla Final Wars. It's basically meant to be Godzilla's retirement. I like this menu screen. I like that you can move the camera around and check out Godzilla's face while he's sleeping. Up, oh, but he wakes up. He's groggy, he blinks a little bit, he starts looking around, wondering what's going on, and then he realizes that we're watching him, but then he's like, eh, screw it, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> Anyways, much like would destroy all monsters, I am doing this to celebrate the fact that the new Godzilla movie, Godzilla King of the Monsters, is now officially released in theaters. I will be going to see it later today myself. In fact, I will have actually I will actually be at the theater sitting down watching it by the time this video goes up. I will have been watching the movie when this video goes up, but We've got a long way to go before I get there, because, basically speaking, I overestimated myself when it came to Destroy All Monsters Melee, and a hard mode was certainly doable, but it presented a lot more of a challenge than I thought that it would. This game... This game addresses certain inadequacies that Melee had, and we'll get to that as we play through the game, but it is definitely harder than Melee, because basically everything that I think is better about this game that benefits the player also benefits the opponent. So, definitely benefits the computer. The thing about it is, is that I tried playing through this game on medium, just to basically have a playthrough that I could do, thinking that I'd do the harder difficulties later on if somebody requested it. Maybe I could do it for a subscriber special. Maybe I could do it as a Patreon reward. But I couldn't, because I realized that even on medium, the game was too easy. Fighting on hard mode gives you a challenge unlike anything else, so we're going to go into it on hard mode. 
And I'm going to warn you guys right now, this is going to be an incredibly long video. I'm probably not going to talk all that much. I have no witty, sarcastic comments to make. I'm just hoping that you guys can appreciate the video for what it is, because I'm probably going to get killed a lot in this playthrough. I'm going to fight. I'm going to come at them hard. They're going to come at me even harder. I'm going to get knocked down, but I'm going to get back up, and I'm going to... And I'm gonna come, and I'm gonna come at them even harder than before. And for some reason, my wireless controller keeps getting out of sync. Point is, they hurt you, hurt them back. You get killed, walk it off. They send one of yours to the hospital, send one of theirs to the morgue. You get knocked down, you get up again. Never let them keep you down. Rising up, back on the street, did my time took my chances. Went the distance, now I'm not gonna stop. Just a man and his will to survive. They hit you, hit them harder. <sighs> Take a drink of water there. Gotta stay hydrated for this playthrough. Now, as you can see, a lot of things are different from the last game. The monster roster is almost twice as large as it was before. We've got all the returning faces, but we've got eight, we've got seven new monsters. Nope, I think, yeah, eight new, mo no, just seven. <laughs> I can't count, okay? Yeah, that's why they put me in charge of the money at work. <laughs> the guy who can't count just put in charge of the money. <laughs> Anyways, as you can see here, the monsters now have stat bonuses, just like I said that they would. Godzilla 2000, he's the main character of this game, so I'm going to be going in with him. His attack is fairly average, his defense not so much, his speed is equal with his attack, and his weapons is equal with his speed. We check Godzilla 90s, his stats are very similar, except his speed and weapons are reversed from what Godzilla 2000's is, which ultimately makes sense. I understand that Godzilla 2000 would be slower because, uh, <laughs> have you seen the thighs on that guy? <laughs> But what I'm surprised is, is that his energy beam attacks are somehow stronger than Godzilla 2000's. Because ultimately, even in the movies, his energy attacks, they just drip with power. But anyways, as you can see, Godzilla 2000 inflicts cutting and slicing damage, but also radiation and fire damage. He's resistant to radiation and fire himself, but he's weak against lightning. King Ghidorah inflicts lightning and sonics, therefore he's resistant to them. It also seems like he's resistant to dark energy, or maybe psychic energy, I don't know. But he's weak against poison, it looks like. Megalon is resistant to fire, explosions, and lightning. And I know for a fact that if you shoot him with lightning, he actually regains health, just like Rodan. Rodan, if you shoot Rodan with fireballs, he regains health, so I'm going to avoid doing that when I fight Rodan. And if we come all the way over here... We can see that Mothra is her own character in this game. Yep, and she starts out in larval form. You could start out fighting as larva. You could cocoon in the middle of the battle, or you could press R2 and shift into a Mago form, which is awesome because when I was a kid, it took me a while to figure out that this was possible. <laughs> I feel dumb. <laughs> and as you can see, uh, Mothra's stats are actually. Her attack and defense are better when she's in larval form, but her speed and weapons are non-existent. That all flips when she goes into a Mago form. She doesn't have the best offensive capabilities or defensive, but she is fast, and she has a lot of weapons. And Mothra is unique because she's the only monster in this game that doesn't have a rage attack. Instead, getting a rage power-up just makes Mothra recover health, so... But anyways, I've talked enough about this. <laughs> Hope I didn't give away the surprise there. I'm going in as hard because I want you guys to basically see not just how tough this game is, I want this video to be long and I want it to be interesting, but at the very end there's a secret cutscene that only activates if you beat it on hard, meaning that you have to get the utmost... It's the good ending, you know? You have to beat the game on hard in order to complete the story as well as fighting one special bonus opponent at the end of the story that kind of sinks in with everything. So, as you can see, the rules are set to hard, and I'm going in. Wish me luck, and may Goji have mercy on my poor white ass. <laughs> I cannot believe that I just said that. <laughs> Here we go, folks. Time to scream. 
Greetings, pathetic Earthlings. I am Vortisha, Queen of the Vortech. Vortisha? Your scientists have unlocked the secrets of Godzilla's DNA and have encapsulated its incredible power in the form of G cells. I must have these G cells in order to create the ultimate monster. Kaigen. Fly, my pretties. Find the G cells and bring them to me. Ghidorah. <clears throat> so it seems like the Vortec commander from the last game was telling the truth. They did return, and this time they brought the queen. So it seems like Space Cougar there. She wants to get Godzilla's DNA so that she can create her own monster powerful enough to defeat him and take over the Earth with. Though I gotta say, trusting to find Godzilla cells to 400 foot monsters, not a good idea. In this game, basically, you collect the G-cells by going around the arena, finding them where they might be scattered around, but the thing about it is, is that I'm going to have to be selective about which ones I go after, because even though they increase my score, they might leave me open for my opponents to get the advantage. Oh. I hate it when they get up and they basically, like, suddenly become immune to your attacks. But this is a good thing, because in the last game you had to push both A and B in order to grab a monster. Now all that's regulated to the L trigger button. L L1, so it's easier. Whoa. Angie's a lot more acrobatic than I remembered. Oh! Come on, Ang. And since I've already long set the high score for this game, I'm not really interested in breaking that high score. I mean, granted it would be nice, but right now it's just I want to basically focus on getting through the game, regardless of what that means. And I'm pretty sure that you don't need to have a top high score in order to activate the final ending. Granted, I do kind of want to collect the G-cells, because... Just for the sake of the story, not letting them fall into the wrong hands, but I basically know that if I basically go after them, I might screw up and give Angie the chance that he needs to gain the upper hand on me. Cannot underestimate my opponents in this game. You'll realize that when I get to Baragon. This is different from the last game, because in the last game, Monster Island's volcano actually cause lava damage whenever you walked on it, but now it's in a much more dormant state. You can still take damage here, you just have to be very selective about it. Basically, there are these little veins that break up in the solid obsidian that basically start spewing lava up towards the sky. And basically, if you step on those, you can get hurt. So as you can see, I'm going around collecting the G-cells, mainly because I think that at this point, I can safely say that I can beat Angie without necessarily falling into too much trouble. Oh no, he's going for the G-cell! And this is a cool thing. Oh! Try that again, Aang. I dare you. So, I got all five G-cells. How is it that these heavy monsters are so acrobatic? Seriously, Anguirus cannot jump that high or that far in the movies. Granted, I take these games with a grain of salt because the monsters are going to do things that they can't do. As you can see, the power-ups in this game have changed. That Atari symbol there is actually the new Airstrike logo. So, now that Mothra's her own character, it's going to summon someone new. But it can summon one of two characters. Who is it going to be? if they actually ever show up. Oh my god, it's another notion. Oh, there he is! It's Batra, Ma Mothra's dark counterpart. The god of war to her goddess of peace. It's time to finish this, Aang. Hey, 
<laughs> that was me being careful, but it's going to get a lot harder from here. As you can see, basically, like, if you, the quicker that you finish off your opponent, the more points you're going to get. Although, oddly enough, <laughs> beating the game at four, with 20 seconds earlier gets me the same amount as 45 seconds. Odd. Getting all five G-cells and defeating the monster, also a prerequisite. Hard mode gives you 5,000 points, and destroying tanks, helicopters, and UFO also gets you bonuses. I've never been able to destroy a UFO, and I don't think I ever will because they're just too valuable. This is where it gets hard, folks, and Garrus was just the warm-up. Now we fight the Assassin. Godzilla 2000! Here's an improvement from the last game, though. It implemented... Fight. Beam Struggles. They basically work kind of like a rock, paper, scissors kind of thing. Oh, you had to just drop that on top of him. G cells are going to be harder to collect off off of Monster Island because they're hidden inside buildings, and Gigan just quite literally flew me through me for a loop. So I am going to get back at him. You guys ever been to an Irish pub with a? with an ill-tempered owner. Spoiler alert. This literally is the most broken thing in the entire game because using a smokestack as a tool, it's basically like guaranteed to just overpower your opponent and send them flying. I destroyed the entire city of Osaka with one of these things. Maybe it's a metaphor on smoking or pollution. Yokaichi Asthma. I'm winning. The way that it works is that basically you send out these pulses and they work rock, paper, scissors like. The, co the pulses are different colors so you have to match up the corresponding color with the one that beats your opponent's color. And the way that it goes is like this. Oh, here's another thing. From, improved from the last game, when your opponent throws something at you, you have the ability to catch it if you basically hit grab at the correct time, but basically it can leave you open because Gigan mostly uses it to trick me into leaving me open so that he can charge up his beam attack. And the reason that I'm not, yeah, that. The reason that I don't, I'm not using my beam attack as often against him is because he teleports behind you when you charge up. Leave, so basically it just leaves you open. And right now he's trying to drag me across the rest of the other side of the end of the stage in order to prevent me from getting the G-cell. But, gonna get it anyway. You should have gone for the head. Take this! Did that not do anything? I'm still in hard mode, right? Because I'm very suspicious. Okay, that was good. I only destroyed one or two helicopters and tanks. I'm going to start focusing on doing that a whole lot more, but I got an incredible time bonus on that. 1,300, only 50% more from having nearly a full minute. Mm. Ugh. <sighs> But I'm breaking in over uh, 10,000 for each victory, so. <sighs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> this next opponent is going to be familiar. Can't have. <clears throat> you can't ever have Godzilla without this guy following behind. Let's hope. Let's hope that I can beat him in the beam struggle. King 
Empty Dora. Because unfortunately, the computer gets wise to my technique for winning beam struggles, and they ultimately figure out a way to circumvent it. You see, the way that I do it is that I kind of you can actually change the color of your pulse to part way down the beam, right before it touches your opponent. So what I do is I faint my opponents into throwing up the color that I want them to, and then quickly switch over to the color I know will, that will defeat them. Death Storm. Oh, kicked me in the face. Oh, how come I couldn't catch that? I will. Gotta hurt him. That ought to do it. Where is it? it disappeared already? God. He tried to grab it, but it was thrown off course. This is probably what it's going to look like tomorrow, and I can't wait for it. They have to basically include so much more monster action because that last one... I mean, I get what the film was going for, but it just didn't work. It didn't appreciate the... didn't make me appreciate the final fight more. If anything, it just kind of pissed me off that the final fight took so long to get here. I'm going to... Maybe I'll make a video explaining in depth my feelings on the 2014 Godzilla movie. It feels like a lot of people on the internet disagree with me, or at least turn it into a meme thing, but it just, it's important. It's a lot more important than you know. Just like what this movie is going to show, it's going to show just how important Godzilla is. He's not just some big lizard that rises up out of the sea to destroy everything. He is what restores balance. And in fact, I think that I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about a theory that I have. Ultimately, like, this movie isn't going to get into showing that, but I think that Godzilla, as well as, like, all of the kaiju, they basically serve a purpose that basically is meant to keep balance on the Earth. Godzilla is sort of meant to be to the kaiju what the kaiju are to us in a lot of ways. Basically speaking, uh, that's Ghidorah's stupid as hell special ability, where he basically can sacrifice his energy to give himself a tiny little boost of health. And that is just... It's not fair, because Godzilla doesn't get a special ability. He just fights. <clears throat> Anyway, as I was saying, is that um, this might sound a little bit morbid, but human beings in a lot of ways, they are very numerous across the planet. And no, I'm not going to get into a kind of Thanos thing. I'm just basically like, well, well, it's pretty much like the analogy of the, of the Yellowstone elk and the gray wolf. Basically like in Yellowstone National Park, basically, hunting of the gray wolves was basically like a huge sport in the, in the turn of the ninth, at the end of the 19th century, until, please don't let me be dead. No, don't, oh. 
KO. King Ghidorah. That was a close fight. Well, if I had to lose to somebody, I'm glad that it was him. At least this isn't like Smash Ultimate, where if you get a, if you lose a fight, you have to go all the way back. Seriously, what the hell were they thinking with that design? Yeah, it makes a whole lot of sense, but it pisses me the fuck off. Thousand versus King Ghidorah. Monsters fight. Now, oh, dang it, Goji! Why didn't you roar? I want you to roar. Give us a big, loud roar. Roar! That's why I like Godzilla 2000's long tail. It helps him reach G cells easier. <sighs> that hospital sacrificed itself to save me. It shall be rewarded in heaven! And yet, the building still hit me. You see, he's learning. That was a stalemate, so we both basically like got blown, blown away. It is annoying considering that he can fly, and the AI knows how to use that. It just seems like the oh, grabbed me with his tail. Forgot that they could do that. At least Ghidorah can. Spikes on his tail. Go figure. I was talking about something, wasn't I? <laughs> the analogy that I was bringing up with the Grey Wolf and the, the Yellowstone Elk was basically goes like this. Basically speaking, the Grey Wolf was nearly hunted to extinction, and that caused the the elk population to grow uncontrollably until surviving members of the Grey Wolf were reintroduced to the environment and thus restored balance. Because an over overpopulation of any species can cause serious detrimental harm to the environment, because not only were the elk basically like running out of room in the forest to basically live, they started spilling into human settlements, but they were also basically destroying the natural vegetation of the forest in and of itself. So, basically speaking, every species needs a predator. And I have a feeling that this argument is going to be brought up in the movie, but not necessarily in mankind's favor. The movie is definitely going to end with mankind being taught a lesson about something, but... I don't think that it's going to end on this bleak note. I have a feeling that, uh, what's his name, the actor, uh, Tywin Lannister, you guys know, basically him from Game of Thrones, I have a feeling that he's going to be representative of the argument that mankind is a species, and, and the, basically the titans are, their, are our predators, so we need them to basically keep population down, and it's basically going to be revealed that Godzilla is the thing that keeps the predators from overrunning us. So, that's just my theory about it. Uh, hope that you guys don't take it too uh, too much to heart. It's the same reason why I liked the ending of Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom. I'm not evil, I'm a pragmatist, and I'm about to die. Where the hell is that final G-cell?
How did we not get to this portion of the city yet? I just killed myself. Oh. Dang it. Okay, no more fooling around. I'm gonna hit him, I'm gonna hit him hard. Yeah, I know I've lost. Let me start o let me do it again. I'm just gonna basically level with you guys. I'm probably gonna be up for hours doing this because it's already late where I am, so. You're supposed to roar when you do that, Goji, because you win. here, you big three-headed chicken! I'm really curious as to how they're going to explain King Ghidorah, because this movie basically tried to give a much more natural explanation to Godzilla and the other monsters. Basically, they're all prehistoric beings that evolved to adapt on to life on Earth when the Earth was irradiated by the Jurassic extinction. Basic and then basically the... And that's how they were able to survive to the KT extinction as well, but when the Earth began to cool, basically like all the radiation on Earth began to basically either get used up or dissipate and become harmless again, they had to go underground, underwater. They basically had to basically burrow deep into the Earth where there were sources of radioactivity in order to survive. But Ghidorah, basically speaking, who knows? I don't know how radiation leads to three heads. That would have to be some kind of genetic defect, especially considering that the other two heads are not vestigial. They are fully functional, just like the... Th as much as... Ah, my trigger is caught. Shoot him out of the sky. No, 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 no. Do not do. <laughs> the bigger they are, the harder you fight. What are those goddamn freezer tanks when you need them? Not... You know what? I'm gonna step on that tank. Stepped on it. Death storm! Ooh. Batra, I need your help. Any day now. Oh, it's better than Batra. It's the Super X3. <laughs> the Super X3 comes equipped with freezer weapons that can immobilize your opponent. Basically, I use that opportunity to charge up my beam and just blast them with everything I've got. Because they basically... By the time they basically finish roaring after becoming... After... Ah! Why can't I knock them down? I'm gonna bite you to death. This is seriously the most effective strategy that I've ever found in this game. This is my new this is my new battering ram attack. That ought to hold you. Now I'm gonna go get the last G cell. 
Yeah, that's good. Push me. Push me along. Duck and cover. This is nuts. It's intense, I gotta tell ya. Holy crap. 25 seconds, 1350? What the heck is going on with this scoring system? I wanna know. I want answers. Call my lawyer. Call my analysts. Call my doctor. Call my tailor. I need a new suit. Okay. That's three battles down. I'm doing good. Here's one of the things that I think this game greatly improves on when it comes to Destroy All Monsters. One thing that was missing from that game was little challenges that you could do with the monsters. But here, we got them. Aliens are attacking the pyramid building. Destroy all six UFOs before they destroy the building. So, we're in San Francisco. <sighs> basically, the best, the easiest way to destroy them is basically just... To lock on to one of them, pick up a building, and then wait for them to come your way. Like that. But you gotta do it quick. You gotta basically make sure that they don't destroy the pyramid building. And the best way to do that is make sure that they're focused on shooting you. But, if you let them get too close, they basically... you'll end up missing. I've actually never gone this far away from the building before. Oh no! That one flew towards the building, and I ended up burning it. <laughs> think of the uh, think of the pyramid building as a lot like the translator from God of War 2. You hurt the things you love. You hurt the ones you were sent to protect. Wish that you could shoot a friggin' fireball at them. Not the UFOs, I mean the ones I was sent to protect. Like seriously, screw screw the escort missions. I wanna shoot someone with a fireball. Also, keep note of how we're here in San Francisco, trying to save one of the most iconic landmarks from destruction. Because it's gonna become very ironic later on. Later on in the playthrough, trust me. Gotcha. What, no energy? No health? What a bunch of flat levers. You know, usually we'd be done by now, but this is on hard mode. But I know I can do this. Boom! Blow up! Inspire your son of a- Inspire your son of a- Now, let's finish this. For those of you who are wondering, you move around with the analog sticks and you lock on with R3. Click down on the right analog stick. BOOM! Two thousand points? Dang it. If I had managed to destroy it sooner, I probably would have gotten four thousand. Ugh. 
Man, I can't wait to check out the movie tomorrow. I'm going to get myself a nice stuffed pretzel. That's going to be great. Godzilla 2000 versus Mega I'm going to hate this fight because this guy is tougher than he looks. He's fire and explosion resistant. He's a cockroach after all. And he just got my G-Cell. You know, I'm just realizing that we're basically the plot of this game is basically trying to prevent evil monsters from getting Godzilla's DNA. So, are we basically trying to s prevent Godzilla's sperm samples from falling falling into the wrong hands? How do you squash a bug? You crush it with a rolled-up piece of newspaper. You see, I told you that this was the most broken thing in this game. I am sending him flying. Fireball! I just knocked him towards another G cell. Ooh! Uh, and now he's got one, but he doesn't know how to use it. I'm pretty sure only Godzilla 2000 can do that. Godzilla 2000 is one. You win. Holy crap. I'm still on hard mode, right? I mean, it makes sense that for this one I didn't get uh, over 10,000, but I think that I basically made enough points on the Ghidorah one to where I could basically sort of take that, but I just completely destroyed him. I mean, <laughs> is it really that simple? Is this some kind of reverse of the Let's Play curse? Because I was so frustrated earlier at trying to fight these guys on hard mode. And <laughs> basically, like, every single time I tried to pick up one of those things I could use as a bat, they would blast me at full power or throw something at me that would make me drop it. So now... <laughs> but I just basically took that thing and I, just, I was just knocking him all over the city! And I'm pretty sure that this is Seattle. Yeah, this was Seattle. I knocked him into the Space Needle. Dang it, I wanted to do a Fraser Crane joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, who's next? Godzilla Osaka, which means it's Rodan. Rodan. I didn't get to showcase him in the last game, so let's see what he can do. Dang it! You clever birdie. Yes, I know that Rodan's not a bird, but still, I hate people who are so semantic about, pedantic about that. No! What the hell you do? What the hell you doing, Rodan? That's my sperm. You know, Goji, this is just what the kind of thing that happens when you leave your DNA lying around. Yeah, that's the real plot of this game. Space Cougar is basically trying to get knocked up using Godzilla's DNA, and then she's going to sue Godzilla for child support. Palimony suits and child support. <laughs> There are no G-cells over here, but what there is, is a little familiar weapon. Dang it! Rodan's too smart. You guys want to know something cool about the upcoming movie? Basically, uh, the scenes where Rodan comes out of the volcano, that was actually filmed in Mexico City. My dad lives in Mexico City. So basically, like, that's really... I found that was really interesting. I had no idea how I was supposed to tell my dad or bring this up because it's kind of weird. But anyway, so basically, in Mexico City, there's a volcano that's basically right outside the city limits. And it's an active volcano. Like, it's not really... It doesn't, like, spew lava or anything, but it's not exactly dormant either. Basically, the volcano causes a whole lot of earthquakes, and basically, like, it 
It always sends up smoke out of the crater, like, every morning or so. Dad basically says that, uh, the mountain's farting again, but... <laughs> Anyways, I th thought that it was so cool that my dad was living in the same city that part of this movie was being filmed in, and that's the volcano that Rodan's gonna come out of. I don't know if it's actually going to be location in Mexico City, it's probably going to be somewhere else, but if it is, I mean, my dad will probably, like, be... <laughs> He'll probably think that it's a bit surreal being living in a city that gets destroyed in this movie. As well as for anybody who might be living in Boston. Spoiler alerts. <laughs> Sorry, Chaos. But, hey, you live out on the outskirts of town, just don't go into town for a few days. Sowy chowy. But anyway, that's the volcano that Rodan's gonna come out of, and I thought that, that was really awesome. My dad lives just outside where Rodan is sleeping. Can I beat him? Yes! Only one G-cell, though. You win! Uh, I should talk about more what this game does that's different from Destroy All Monsters. One thing that I had a problem with Destroy All Monsters with is that the atomic beams didn't lock on to the opponents. You charged up and you had the complete ability of missing unless you were good at aiming with the C-stick. That's not something that you could do in Destroy All Monsters, but this game relegates that because now it not only locks on to the B... Not, not only does it lock on to your opponent, but... Uh, Okay, what am I trying to say? It locks onto your opponent, but you can also quickly change to toggle out your targets. Just by holding the L2 button, you can scroll between, like, whatever is available nearby. For example, if Batra or the Super X2, the Super X3, or if a tank or helicopter is nearby, while I'm basically firing my, firing my laser, I can just hit L2 and just immediately toggle towards shooting out one of them. Makes it a whole lot easier to rank up a helicopter bonus. If one is in the area, of course. <laughs> Who's next? So, nobody good, I'm sure. Oh god. Oh please. Please don't be who I think it is. Please don't be who I think it is. God. It's who I think it is. I'm in London. And I'm fighting... Versus. Baragon. Oh god. Baragon's not a brawler, but he is an acrobat. And god dang it, this is not the easiest city to get around in. Baragon doesn't have a standard heat beam, so I can't get him into a duel. But he just pretty much spouts fire whenever he wants. Gotta prevent him from getting that! No! No energy for you! No soap for you! Run, Goji. Run! You know what danger lies behind those mousy ears of his. Ladies, you might think that Baragon is cute, but believe me, this thing is a monster. Eh, even I admit Baragon's kinda cute. That's basically why he's ba always portrayed as kind of like the, not necessarily one of the, the kaiju characters, but more like a kaiju pet. <laughs> he's basically the dog of the group. <laughs> he's got... <laughs> Technically, he's not supposed to have fire breath. This version is more or less a hybrid. Of the one, of the Shawa version from um, Frankenstein Conquers the World, also known as Baragon vs. Frankenstein. Yes, Toho, the Japanese studio, did produce a Frankenstein movie. Because why wouldn't they? And it's also hybridized with his 2001 appearance from Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters All Out Attack. Yep, he was the only character that was actually supposed to be in that movie, and yet he's still not in the title. Ugh, get off of me! Basically speaking, now that I'm going to start fighting him, you guys are going to see just how powerful and dangerous he is. Because I go up to try and grab him, he jumps. I go up... He's so acrobatic. 
Seriously. I'm surprised that they just didn't give him wings for how agile he is. I mean, he's not that strong of a monster, so they had to compensate him somehow. But his speed is sometimes ridiculous. Just watch me beat him. Just watch me win, despite hyping up how dangerous he is. I'm gonna bite him! Yeah, I was basically convinced that he was Mighty Mouse the last time I fought him, but now... Oh! He does that from time to time. Bite ya! Because you're smaller, and I'm the bigger, carnivorous opponent. I'm the predator. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like, in one movie, Godzilla Tokyo SOS, they established that Godzilla can, in fact, like, hunt and kill smaller prey and actually smaller monsters to eat them. So, I'm actually surprised that Baragon can actually last as long as he does surviving in the same geography as Godzilla, but... Wow, I cannot believe I won, and that was probably the best fight yet. 1600 for the time bonus, 3000 for defeating the monster. It seems like the further you go in the game, the more the game starts rewarding you for, well, winning. Ugh. Mm. Mm. It's almost midnight where I am. Up, <laughs> <clears throat> oh, we're back in San Francisco, and now, after saving the pyramid building, we have to destroy the city. Here's what you do: you pick up anything that you can, and throw it at the bigger things that you can't pick up. I, ma I did manage to do this, but I'm now realizing that I got lucky on the time bonuses. Basically, like, inside these built, occasionally inside the buildings are capsules that give you more seconds on the clock. Ten seconds at least. God, I wish I had my rage. That way I could just nuclear pulse these things into the ground. thing about the time bonuses is they'll never appear in the same place twice. Hoping that these big ones have something for me. See if I can get them both at the same time. Nope, didn't even get one. That might not look like it gave me nothing, but I picked up a tank. But I'm positive it gave me a thousand. Is this a hotel? I have a feeling that it's a hotel. Anybody who lives in San Francisco, can you confirm if that's a hotel for, for me? only got one minute left and I haven't gotten any time bonuses. Oh come on, is this a rever- is this the Let's Play curse? You didn't give me one single time bonus? Capital building. Okay, so I must have clearly gotten lucky last time with the time bonuses. Oh wait, I didn't go down to the docks!
Dang it. I really wanted to get that. Because I know it's possible. I've done it. Oh, this is basically mind numbing. Oh no. No, 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 no. We're back in London. Mothra. Monster. Mothra's physical power is pretty much her weapons are non existent, but you start out the fight in larval form. It's basically designed to whittle your health down. You can drain as much as you can from the larva, but eventually, regardless of how good you're doing, she cocoons herself. Or does that. Replenishes her own. God, I'm so tired of London. It's so friggin' hard to move here. I'm here, you! This isn't even her final form. Transform, Mothra. Show us all what you really are. Fun fact, I actually used this game as a reference when I was making my Mothra Larva sprite sheet back in the day. Ah, uh, those were the times. I need to get to work on making the updated version with the more realistic sprite that I've created for Tales of the Elias. And I need to get back to writing the Eli Tales of the Elias. Just writing is hard, you know? It's a bitch. It's because I want to have illustrations with them, but... Uh, creating art takes, even, takes arguably just as much time as writing does. Yep, that was a mistake, because... Mothra has reflective scales that allow her to deflect any energy beams sent her way. Fly, butterfly, fly! Yeah, I don't think that Mothra is actually a true moth. I have an argument to be made about that because, well, the gist of it is is that Mothra does Mothra's wings basically behave like a moth's does, but they are colored like a butterfly's. Mothra doesn't use camouflage. That would be cool if she had a camouflage ability, but hey, some sources say that Godzilla is supposed to have a camouflage ability. I really hope that she doesn't get killed in this upcoming movie. I want her Ma and Rodan to survive until the very end. I want to actually see them help Godzilla fighting Ghidorah. Cannot stress that enough. Batra, I need your help. Oh, wow, she bounced that right back at me. I don't even know how she did that. Oh, it's the Super X. Ah, uh, but I gotta lead her out of the buildings. Ah! Uh. Holy, well, I won. Three G cells, but I think we're we're doing okay. Like I said, I'm not going for the high score. I can't. Not this video is too important to me to spin my wheels and right now we're more than halfway through and I'm more than a hundred thousand points behind. This is usually where I'd be if I was playing on medium difficulty at the very end but I still got some ways to go. Hey you remember what I said about it being ironic that I just destroyed San Francisco? Godzilla. We're in San Francisco again and it's already rebuilt <laughs> and Godzilla's confused. He's like what the heck? Destroyer. Destroyer. Monster. Seriously, they rebuilt it in the course of one single day? And people think that the Japanese contractors have a thriving business. <gasps> <clears throat> you 
you know what this is for. Oh, there was one in the built in the Capitol building. Let's go to the stadium. Let's take it a baseball game. But do, 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 do. weird. That's usually where I'd hide. Aw, oh, jeez. I said that they usually that they never pop up in the same place twice, but I know that basically, like. The stadium was a good place to look for time bonuses. But, I could still step up to bat. <clears throat> I can't send him flying, he's too heavy. But I can. <clears throat> That counts as flying, right? Blast him! <laughs> Taste of crab. Well, that's King King Crab. <laughs> Get in the water. I destroyed this city once. It's had enough. <laughs> said, never said that to Tokyo. Oh, that's his beam katana. I mentioned that in the last video, didn't I? Said. K.O. Godzilla 2001, and you win! <sighs> 3,500. Well, I'm still making over 10,000. I think I got another challenge next. No, wait. I just came off of a challenge. So who's next? I don't know. Oh, it is another challenge. This is cool because it's the underwater one that I wanted to show you guys. Godzilla, two Godzilla 2000 is one of the only two characters that can do a section like this. Because basically it's kind of like a third person rail shooter in a lot of ways. You shoot with X and you charge up your atomic beam with circle. Hey look, balloons! It is a party! Oh, I keep your distance, though. You surely don't want one of them to pop. <laughs> keep your distance, though, Chewy, but don't look like you're trying to keep your distance. I don't know. Fly casual. Swim casual. <laughs> keep your distance, though, Goji, but don't look like you're trying to keep your distance. I don't know. Swim casual. Uh, who is that? That is Ebera, the Jumbo Shrimp Monster. <laughs> Technically, he's more akin to a lobster. That's a crustacean, but Eb Ebi in Japanese literally means shrimp. So, Ebera is basically a <laughs> Jumbo Shrimp. He's gonna be behind me now. I gotta avoid his attacks. I know my health is low. This should end it. Boil that thing. Right, I'll melt the butter. <laughs> I can get a health power up later in the level if I can just survive that long. Man, this didn't give me as nearly as much trouble as last time. Though for some reason, this isn't give gonna give me any bonus points. This here is just strictly for show, for some reason. Come on, guys! I'm trying to save the Earth here! Give me a break! <laughs> Fuck! 
please don't lose. Please don't die on this challenge. There's so many things I want the people to see, and you're doing so well on this run. Look at the size of that tanker. I just swim through the rock. There's the health bonus. If I could just reach it. Yes. Yeah. Now we're back in this fight. And now the subs are running away from me. I mean, I suppose I can assume that it's possible that the sub that the people in the submarine are either have been assimilated by the Vortac, being controlled by the Vortac, or even the Vortac themselves. It's just Maybe they're just using human technology, but I just have this feeling that their ex examples of their technology are a lot more impressive than human beings, because we've defeated Ebra. Who else are we going to fight? I really wish that other monsters could do this challenge as well, because most of the monsters are aquatic, so... Oh, what's this? It's a gigantic hammerhead Vortac submarine. Take out those engines. It's amazing how Godzilla can still shoot fireballs when he's firing his atomic breath as well. taking out their weapons. How have I not destroyed that hatch yet? Should do it. The sub is coming down. Oh no. They say he's got to go. Go, go, Godzilla. Yeah. Quite frankly, if the Vortac could use that thing to fly, it would make a pretty kick ass battleship. Oh wait, I get 9,000 points for this. I was wrong. <laughs> Though, I guess if you're going to invade a planet that's basically 75% water, you might as well bring a submarine. Now I'm curious as to how it got here, considering that their saucers are very are considerably smaller than it is.
Maybe the mothership brought it. In New York! Also known as Kiryu. Oh, this is... <laughs> the game is being an asshole right now. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to make you pay for that. For those of you who don't know, Kiryu is the third generation of Mechagodzilla that was introduced in the Millennium series. That's the third series of Godzilla films, and it was one of the more interesting ones. It's created by the humans, much like Mechagodzilla 2 was, but this one was different. This Mechagodzilla, well, it's not exactly believable that human beings can just whick up, whip up a mecha dinosaur kaiju just on the scrap. Uh, basically, Mechagodzilla 2 was built with the remains of Mecha King Ghidorah, but in this one, Mecha King Ghidorah doesn't exist, so what did they use to build Mechagodzilla? They actually grafted the robot around the framework of the skeleton of the original Godzilla, the one that was killed in the original Godzilla movie in 1954, which is weird because at the end of the movie, basically the bones disintegrated. I personally just sort of disregard that because it's just cooler to think that the bones are still lying there and can be used for something, as well as something that I personally believe in, and fight me on that, I won't ever stop believing it. <clears throat> The thing about it is, is that they rose Godzilla's bones up from the sea in order to build, use him to build a super weapon to, de to defeat Godzilla with. But the thing about it is, is that they've technically disturbed the original Godzilla from his grave, and that's what's actually inspiring the new Godzilla to come in and attack Japan. So they literally caused their own problem this time. Maybe it has to do with, like, the anti-militarization commentary that the, mo that the Millennium series was all about making back then. Eh, that was- that series was deep, but it wasn't really good for longevity. But, anyways... My nose is stuffed. Why is my nose stuffed? Anyways, what was I saying about Mechagodzilla? What's interesting about the Mecha Godzilla is that it, apparently Godzilla's bones, well, they they have traces of Godzilla's DNA in them, and apparently with a genetic memory as well. And also, they're haunted. Yeah, Godzilla's spirit is still infused to the bones, and because he's been disturbed from his grave, he is royally pissed. And basically, when Kiryu is sent out to fight the new Godzilla, after Godzilla roars, and Kiryu hears the roar, it basically is, it basically wakes up the dormant spirit that is it, the Godzilla spirit that's attached to the bones, and, well, it basically causes Godzilla to possess, to possess Kiryu, and he goes on a rampage. Yeah, so, it's kind of a blend between Mechagodzilla being both a tool used by mankind to stop Godzilla while also being a villain. Which I prefer Mechagodzilla as a villain because I just cannot believe for the life of me that human beings would ever be capable of building something like it. Dang it. And the clock stopped. And Batra never showed up. He's a tough customer, I'll give him that. It's okay that I lost to him. Almost like it would be if I lost to that one there. You guys know who I'm talking about. The Terminator. Well, technically the first generation Mechagodzilla was the Terminator, but they treat MG2 like the Terminator. Monster fight! Smart. Too smart. <laughs> One thing that I really like about Kiryu's design is that it's much more believable that he would be so mobile as he is. The other Mechagodzillas look so stiff and rigid. For the one thing, I'm ultimately basically like, uh, the first Mechagodzilla definitely couldn't move around aside from flying, but it was still fully battle-capable. But I would never believe that Mechagodzilla 2 would be useful in a hand-to-hand, -hand, useful in a straight fight, just with his beam attacks and weapons and whatnot. 
Satan, but Kiryu, because basically his design is more or less just metal plates strewn together, basically held together by black wiring that's meant to simulate sinew and muscle tissue and whatnot, it's a much more believable design. Plus, I like the fact that its spikes are modeled more after a Millennium Series Godzilla, because it is a Millennium Series Godzilla. Ugh. Okay, in a head-to-head -head confrontation, he wins. The missiles... Okay, so his missile hit me when I was when we were in the beam struggle, but fortunately that causes us both to get hurt. Oh. Ugh. He's keeping me at bay. Dang it, I was totally supposed to devastate him using physical attacks before using the rage, but he was keeping me at bay. I was just so worried about basically losing. I have no idea where the G cells are. It's New York, they could literally be anywhere. And seriously, like, having the G cells in New York is not a good idea. Like, imagine if the turtles got their hands on that. You think Gamera's annoying? Wait till there's five of them. Mechagodzilla 3 has a unique victory animation that I would wish that he would do already. God, my back hurts. <laughs> Godzilla 2000! Central Park. I recall Central Park in fall. How you tore your dress. Oh, I can see this time, huh? So you're done being an asshole? Dang it! I'm free! I'm free! Dang it! Oh! That had to hurt his hand. I'm gonna bring down the Empire State Building. Let's just say I have a grudge with a guy who hangs out on top of it. You see, this is why self-control is important, because I was basically thinking about, like, making a really tasteless joke, but I'm not going there. I am never, ever going to make that joke. Seriously, even I don't like talking about it all that much. Run away! I am doomed. Can't beat him in this fight. Too many tall buildings here. He's destroying more of the city than I am. One thing that I really wish you could exploit about this Mechagodzilla is the fact that they wanted to make Mechagodzilla more realistic in the movie, so they gave him a limited fuel supply. Uh, just not in a stupid way like The Last Jedi did. Nope. They gave him... They basically, like, um, pretty much gave him a limited fuel supply so that basically he can't actually fly on his own. I mean, he does have his own rocket boosters, but they're more or less meant to lower him to the ground. How he gets around is that he's actually carried by a couple of jet planes that lock cables onto him. So they anchor to him, and then they pick him up, and they drive him to the destination. <laughs> Ta, stop the clock. So I wish that you could take advantage of that and make him run out of fuel in the middle of a fight, leaving him vulnerable to attack. 
you know, like they did with Mogera. Godzilla 2000 versus. I've come so far and I'm not giving up. I am going to fight until I win. Godzilla is never going down. <laughs> Like I said, head to head, he wins. <gasps> Wait a second, his missiles, they come out of his back and then they have to fly towards the target, so... If I could lure him inside the buildings, he won't be able to use them. That is, if he doesn't bring the whole city down first. <laughs> I stubbed my funny bone there. The winning strategy sometimes necessitates sacrifice. Batra, I need your help. Don't send the Super X. Dang it, he tricked me! The machine. It's learning. Ah, oh, you set the Super X. You froze me? You guys can't aim for shit! So close! There, that's the one that I wanted him to do. Because I'm tired of the monsters doing the same default victory pose over and over and over again. <sighs> oh my god, it hurts so much. One second. <sighs> so, anybody watching or anybody watching any playthroughs or actually playing the new Five Nights at Freddy's game, Help Wanted? Because Basically speaking, I have something interesting that I want to say about it. I can't get these damn... You guys don't hear anything. You guys don't hear any shaking going on. 
on my end. Just, there you go. Anyway, what I was saying is that there's this one section of the game where you have to hide in a closet while one of the animatronic characters is trying to find you. The idea is that basically if they spot you, you close the closet doors until they forget about you. Now the thing about it is, is that if you accidentally open the door while the animatronic is still interested in the closet, thinking, not trying to get in there and get to you, it will make a sound. The sound is meant to sound like metal scraping on metal, but me, who basically knows this stuff, I happen to know for a fact that that sound effect is actually Godzilla 2014's roar. Seriously. It's the roar that they used for the 2014 movie, I know, because it makes the same kind of sound as the end of, of his roar. It's that high-pitched... <laughs> Speaking of which, I really don't care for that roar. They're fixing a lot of things with this movie. One thing that I'm hoping for, but not getting my hopes up too high, is that they give Godzilla his roar back. That roar is fine, but it's just not all that Godzilla to me. I'm gonna be honest, the G Godzilla 98 has a better roar than 2014 does. <sighs> I need to refill my water. Just give me a quick second. We're going to get back to fighting. Don't worry. I'm just taking a quick sabbatical. Ah. Okay, back to action. All right, Dragon Zord, let's do this. Duh, because I'm playing as the real gr big green Godzilla here. And you know what that means? Hit the music. Go, Green Ranger, go! Go, Green Ranger, go! Get Dora's gonna get you tonight! Send down the monsters to destroy the Earth! Don't let evil Vortisha control your mind! Go, Green Ranger! Go! Go, Green Ranger! Go, Green Ranger! Go, go! Go, Green Ranger! Go, Green Ranger! Go, Green Ranger! John Rasterman, please don't sue me! Go, Green Ranger! Go, Green Ranger! Go, go! That was oddly invigorating. No matter what, I was going to lose that exchange, because I didn't have enough energy to keep up. If I could have knocked him all the way down to his, but... Oh! He shoved his head up my butt. Is that the part where I say that Mechagodzilla is into some kinky stuff? Uh, or maybe it's the pi or maybe it's the guy who's piloting him. 
Well, technically, he's remote-controlled pilot, piloted from the planes, but... Oh! It's gonna be close. So far, the city has been kicking his ass more than I have. Stop the clock! Yeah! Finally! I told you. They knock me down, I get back up again. They hit me hard, I hit them harder. Right. And I have a feeling that we're heading towards the final act of the game. Unless hard mode is going to throw some more enemies at me. It would be cool if I could fight every single one of the monsters to give you guys perspective on how cool they are. How different everything is. Godzilla okay, this is good. Versus Mogera. Monsters fight! Can't get into a beam struggle with him, he's like Baragon. But, like I mentioned with Kiryu, he actually does run out of fuel. He runs on batteries. Apparently two double A's. Or triple A's, whatever. Uh, whichever one, whichever are the batteries that uh, power Serpentera. Are we back in London? Veronica, give me a hand. Yay! I'm gonna destroy Parliament. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I bet that basically I'm never gonna be allowed to go to London after this. I destroyed the Palace of Wins Win Winsmester, but I don't know how to pronounce it, okay? But I do know that I'm going to destroy the, El the Elizabeth Tower, also known as Big Ben, but it's actually the bell that's inside Big Ben. This has been another useless fact from a pedantic jackass who hates other pedantic jackasses. <sighs> yeah, thanks for your help, Super X. Glad you froze him once and then just completely set him up to where he could get the next friggin' EMP. And here comes Batra. No. You stay away from me, Bat. Batman! He's Batman. Up. Oh, he's recharging. That's the only way that Mogera can regain energy. He has to shut himself down to recharge. Huh. He's dead. You win! Five thousand for defeating the monster. Good. Huh. Holy crap, I might be able to pull this off. Please let me fight Jet Jaguar next. Please let me fight Jet Jaguar next. Godzilla nope. 2000. It's the mothership. I spoke too Versus. soon. Or I'm kind of I'm kind of disappointed because this means that I don't get to fight Mechagodzilla 2, Jet Jaguar, or Mecha King Ghidorah, and they're like, and apart from Mega Gearus, they're like the only ones that I had left to fight. So anyway, here we are at the final quote unquote quote final battle, and it's basically a lot like the Mechagodzilla fight from last time. It takes place on the mothership, except this time the secret character from the last game is the aliens. Headliner. So. Fight. You're not the only one who can hide like a coward. Why are 
their beams faster than mine. God. That's the thing about Orga, he has a rush attack where he can grab the opponents while running, and he can grab them from the air, but if he misses, he gets dizzy. Oh! The aliens are cheating! <sighs> Get over. New buildings. I wonder what they could be for. Yep, this is where they're holding the G-cells. I can't leave them in their hands. Who knows? Maybe stalling like this will give me a chance to save myself. I can at least find four of them right off the bat, but I know that the fifth one is hidden in a different building. Okay, it's official. Different monsters can di pick up different sized buildings. So, I guess that means Godzilla is actually on the weaker scale. Damn it. Yeah, just you wait, Quasimodo. It's time for round fucking two, motherfucker. And destroying those sh alien ships flying around didn't add to the UFO bonus, because apparently alien ships are not UFOs, just the circular disc things that fly around dropping the power-ups. That are impossible to hit, believe me, I've tried. Godzilla 2000 versus... <sighs> Monsters fight. Stop hiding. I like the design of the mothership. I like the fact that basically it's its own ecosystem inside of a dome. It basically has an entire alien city on the inside. It basically shows that like the aliens weren't just coming here to basically like build something. They already had their city ready prepared. They could just plant it wherever they wanted. Plus, for all we know, the entire Vortac race could be on this ship. Yay! We're driving an entire pe species of people to extinction! Hey, they were gonna do it to us. 
You guys know the golden rule, right? Do unto others before they do unto you. That's not the golden rule! That is how I say it. Street. In my time took my chances Way in the distance now I'm back on my feet Just a man and his will to survive Too many times it happens too fast It trades your passion for glory Don't lose your grip on the dreams of the past You must fight just to keep them alive It's the Eye of the tiger, it's the thrill of the fight Rising up to the challenge of our rival And the last known survivor stalks his prey in the night And he's watching us all with the eye of the tiger The eye of the tiger The eye of the tiger And that is hard mode Whew, made it all the way to Orga, defeated the mothership. Holy crap, I got 16,000 for that. Whew. And, but I'm still 4,000 short. No way I could possibly win. Wait a second, where's the congratulations screen? What? What's going on? <laughs> you guys aren't fooled, I told you about this, but drama. Who am I going to fight now? Who is the ultimate monster enemy that Vorticia Vorticia created? 2000. We're back in Tokyo. Versus Space Godzilla. Space monster. Godzilla. Yes, Veronica, there is a Space Godzilla. It's unclear if Morticia made her from, made him from Godzilla's DNA, the G cells that they might have captured. But what it, but basically, this monster doesn't appear unless you get all the way here on hard mode. As you can see, he sprouts crystals from the ground. Those crystals rejuvenate his energy, and if he chooses to destroy them with his special ability then, basically, they can restore a portion of his health. The trick is to lure him away from them, because, basically, if he's not close to the crystals, then... He can't recharge his energy. He's, all of his attacks depend on energy, because as you can see there, he can fly. Telekinesis. So, basically speaking, he requires a whole lot of energy to function. How the heck did I lose that one? Oh yeah, the energy. He's out too. Leapfrog. Space Godzilla is probably the only, th the closest thing that Godzilla has to coming to an evil clone. For a while, Mecha Godzilla filled that role, but it's not alive, you know, in certain s s scenarios. 
But Space Godzilla came in on the scene and satisfied the evil Godzilla trope. Mm -hmm. And boy, is he a powerhouse. I mean, even I gotta admit, the amount of powers that this creature has is ridiculous. But, like in the movie, Godzilla I'm going to defeat Space Godzilla by biting him. Oh, my head! <laughs> Apparently, somehow, biting Space Godzilla is supposed to block the flow of energy in the movie. Did it! I beat him! Yes! Holy shit! I got through hard mode. I cannot believe that I did that. It only took me about two hours. I honestly thought that I was going to be up all night doing this. And by defeating him, I got 100 and... Th wait, no. 13,000 points for that. And so with a 5,000 for hard mode, that's 18,000. Plus 2, 4. That's 20... Mm. 22,000, 22,600, excellent, 750, <laughs> oh, oh, that's heartbreaking, it brought me up so much that I was only 10,000 away from, no, well, yeah, 10,000 away from securing the deal, if I had just gone after more G-cells, probably could have done it. Oh well, I didn't set out to break a new record. I set out to show you guys the true ending of this game, which is... Not again! This can't be happening to me! Ah! Sorry, Space Cougar. <laughs> but that's not the end. This is... Whoa, that skyrockets. da 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 Space Godzilla. His crystals are destroyed, and he's sucked into the black hole from whence he came. Godzilla is victorious, and the Vortac retreat. For now. But as long as they exist, mankind will never know peace. I was so surprised. Uh, I had this game for about a year before I tried playing on a harder difficulty, and then when I finally beat Orga, and then I discovered that, holy crap, Space Godzilla. Well, I suppose that makes sense. They made a big deal about him being in the game, so makes sense that he would be in it. <clears throat> and then finally they showed that ending cutscene with Space Godzilla being defeated and sucked into the, into the black hole. That's awesome. Though it makes it hard to basically figure out because it ultimately... I'll have to do more videos on this game. But anyway, here's some concept art for the game that I think some was left over from Destroy All Monsters as well. I just want to go through it while I'm talking. This is an Arctic level, which would have been awesome. As you can see, in this one they're using the same models that were from Destroy All Monsters. You basically can see that Godzilla... For some reason, my analog stick's not responding. Godzilla, Gigan, and Anguirus are clearly their Destroy All Monsters variants, but... We also have someone new, Titanosaurus. He planned to be in the game, but must have gotten scrapped. Although, that's clearly not a real monster model. That's clearly a picture of Titanosaurus that was basically stuck in there for... I don't know. Who knows? Maybe he wasn't supposed to be playable at all. Maybe he was a stage hazard. But I feel like an Arctic level would have been awesome, because over here, we've got a submarine that could basically attack the players and whatnot. <sighs> ah, this is some concept art for stuff that Mogera is going to do that I'll have to cover in another video. And here's some more. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> 
and here is the greatest kaiju superhero in the entire tokusatsu j genre, Jet Jaguar. No, I cannot sing Japanese, so I'm going to sing the appropriate English lyrics. <clears throat> His jock is made of steel. <laughs> I don't know the rest of the song, though, apart from his smile looks like Jack Nicholson and his mother never really loved him. Oh, and that he, his crime fighting helps cover up his basic insecurity. <laughs> Jet Jaga, Jet Jaga, Jet Jet Jaga. More alien chips. Huh, I said chips, not chips. Chips, 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 chips. There's the intro. The Eye of Godzilla. Somebody needs to make this into a desktop. In fact, I wonder if I can get this as a thumbnail. That would be great. Godzilla falling into the ice. <laughs> he's back! And it looks like he's craving Italian. That's what I liked about the 2014 movie. The fact that now that Godzilla was back, people were using him to advertise stuff. It was a bit weird watching him swallow cars, but you can definitely tell that this was taken from Destroy All Monsters Melee because that's, that's the version of Tokyo that's in the game. Our Tokyo is more water-based. This looks like it would be interesting. Destroying a big alien ship while Mogera comes to help. Awesome. <laughs> oh god. Being strung up by the Mothra larvae. Here's some images of Space Cougar. Not gonna lie, 8 out of 10 would probably do. There's the sub. There's the underwater portion. Although I like that they had Godzilla 90s with a blue atomic breath. Godzilla has defeated Gigan. And there's a clearly different version of Osaka with Mount Fuji in the background. Yeah, I'm surprised that Mount Fuji doesn't make an appearance in this game. You would think that basically they would give us a stage where you can fight on the slopes of Mount Fuji, but there's not much in terms of destruction to be caused there. Here's Godzilla swimming towards the underwater volcano. It's incredible, the sense of scale. You can see, you know how big Godzilla is, but that, that is just massive. And there's Godzilla throwing Baragon into the wall of the volcano, which is no longer destructible. And, of course, more spoilers with what Mogera is going to be doing. But wow, they didn't have the black hole. If that is a black hole, black holes don't give off light. Maybe it's a white hole. You see, this is what I'm talking about. They needed to have more levels like this instead of just with Godzilla and the other one. It's Mogera. I can't keep jerking you around like this. It looks like they were planning a level with Rodan, but this level isn't in the game, and I've tried finding it so many times. I've played Rodan on hard mode thinking that that would unlock it, but it's just not in the game, and I wish it was, because this could be cool with how fast Rodan flies. It would be it would be like the Death Star the Death Star Trench Run. <sighs> Shoulda, woulda, coulda. And you can clearly tell that this is from Destroy All Monsters because that's clearly Godzilla 2000's Destroy All Monsters model. You can see his eyes. You can't see them on the model in this game. The models in this game are more detailed, but I like the Destroy All Monsters version. This is the development team running away from Godzilla. It's awesome. I need to do that. I need to edit my own pictures like that. And here's one where it looks like Godzilla has to hide from a lighthouse. I wonder why. Well, anyways, that's all the pictures to go through, and it's just... I don't know, I don't want to end off the video just here, but... There's nothing else to do aside from going over the Final Wars images, but... 
I will choose to save those for another time, because right now it's like half past midnight and I'm basically hungry. I can easily go downstairs and make myself something to eat before going to bed, so anyways, that is all the time that we have for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, because as hard and as much as how much I complained about this game as I did, this is a fun game, and I love it. I mean, everything that Melee does, this game does so much better. And the thing about it is that the stages are a lot more well-balanced. They give you much more open space to move around. You don't have to basically jump out of a labyrinth of buildings or destroy buildings just to make room to fight. So, anyways... <clears throat> Hope that you guys enjoyed watching. Which monster was your favorite from this game? Which monster fight was your favorite? And do you have a favorite monster from the entire Godzilla franchise? Did you like seeing me fight all the monsters from the Godzilla franchise? Did you like seeing me lose? <laughs> you, you, you guys satisfied that I went through all this on hard mode just for you guys? Let's see, what monsters didn't I fight? Check, check, check. That's one, two... Three, four. Yep. Four monsters that I didn't fight. <laughs> Could they really not have extended it just a few more? I mean, basically, like, give me another challenge, like, uh, after you defeat Kiryu, you'd fight... Mogera. Maybe you could fight Megagirus next and give you one last final challenge, which I think could have been the ultimate challenge from this game, which I'm going to have to do its own video on, and gonna have to center it entirely on this separate on a separate video. So anyways. And then basically after that, fight Jet Jaguar, King Ghidorah, then Mecha Godzilla, and then you could fight Orga. And then the real challenge. Space Godzilla. I don't necessarily remember if it's true or not, but I think that if you play as Space Godzilla, you're actually uh, you're actually fighting for Vorticia. I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to check that to make sure. As you can see, Space Godzilla is decked out on weapons, but he's weak to regular slicing power, so physical attacks do a lot on him. But he's resistant to almost everything else. <laughs> Except for fire. <laughs> Man, that model of Kiryu is just not flattering. The pose. The portraits no don't really flatter the monsters all that well. Uh, but anyways, I think that I've dragged this out long enough and it's time to say goodnight. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Share, like, and share it with your friends. You want to keep up to date with more videos, for content from me coming your way in the future, including some more Godzilla videos in the future, because this video, this game, reminds me that I have a lot to talk about when it comes to Godzilla, so you can be expecting more monstrous moments, more Godzilla theory videos, kaiju discussion videos, all of that cool stuff that I promised that I was going to do for Jurassic Park but never got around to doing, but I promise you, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to knuckle down and bring you better content outside of just playing games. So, thank you guys. If you guys want to keep up to date on all that coming your way, then just smash that subscribe button like you're destroying an entire city with your great gigantic kaiju fists. And... Ring that little bell for notifications. It could even be the bell and the it could even be Big Ben and the Elizabethan Tower. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next video. Later.